Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back for another rendition of Solo Laura Estate Sale vlog, video, series, something like that. Um, today we're going to a second day estate sale where it looks like there's some interesting stuff. I'm not too sure what to expect. I think there was a good amount of vintage stuff. I don't know how much holiday there is, um, but we're going to go and check it out. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, I'm only one half of Shiny Bright Doggo. I'm usually here with Janine, um, but she's not here today. We're going to this estate sale with just me and you, and uh, we are looking for anything vintage, you know, holiday, housewares, that's what Janine and I like to collect, Vintage Holiday, and we dabble in reselling to help fund the collection. Now, if you already know the drill, give this video a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel and you're liking this by the end of the video, I hope you subscribe because it would mean a lot to us and it really helps us out. Oh, and before we begin, don't want to forget to mention that tonight we are having a Hello Kitty Y2K ornament sale over on Whatnot. It's at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, and we're going to be selling all these amazing Hello Kitty ornaments, many of which are current Adlers, so we hope to see you guys there. There's a link in the description of this video to find out more. This sale had so much stuff. I immediately walked in and was overwhelmed a bit with all of the holiday. I took a good look through everything, and only a few vintage pieces stuck out, like that Santa and these ceramic trees that they were asking $100 each on. Um, but, you know, one of our top tips is to really sleuth around and look at every bin, every tin, in this case, and look for things that may be overlooked. This was the second day, so I wasn't expecting a ton of amazing finds, but I did come across this little tin of vintage tags. There were tags from the 70s and a few vintage ornaments that I wasn't expecting to find either. Hidden under this little sleigh was a little elf from probably the 60s. She definitely looked like an older vintage mid-century little angel pick. And so I take a look at these little miniature collectibles, leave them behind, but pick up all the tags that I found in that tin. I put them in my bag and I'm hoping for a good price if I make a really big pile. Now, when I first walked in, I saw these ceramics. I didn't really get a second to show you guys um, just because I was really excited to have found them, but they are actually one pair or one piece to a set of salt and pepper so each one was missing a partner or a pair um but the angel was a really unique one very hard to find and i'll talk about it later in the video but she wanted 25 dollars each for these or 20 each if i bought all three um and i ended up not picking up any of them the ceramics are getting so hard to find so if this was you know a piece that i really wanted i definitely probably would have paid that price it, it was an okay price but um, I have so many ceramics at home, so I did decide to pass up on them. I continued looking through the Christmas room and came across some sheet music that I thought was really cute. Um, and I was hoping to find some Christmas, of course, which I didn't come across, but I did find this little elf one. I thought this was so fun with the illustrations and I almost picked it up, but it was pretty written all over on the front by a child. So I left it behind and then I came across this whole basket of these vintage, like, embroidered applique pieces that I fell in love with. There were so many in here, wreaths and candles, and I wanted all of it. And I took all of it and I put it in my bag and I was hoping to get a really good deal on all of it. But you guys are gonna have to stick around to see if I actually did end up getting it all. Now, because of everyone's, you know, advice over the years of looking at newer Christmas, I did take my time in this room, even though there wasn't a lot of vintage. I took a look at all the different pieces and came across this set of snowmen. Now, after passing one of these up at the thrift store, I now know to look out for certain ones. You want ones that are bigger or multi-snowman. They can sell pretty well on eBay. Here are some comps, and these are definitely something I'm going to keep an eye out for. I didn't pick up any of these because individually they only sell for about $10 or less on eBay. Had I lotted them up together, they might have been a good pickup, but I left them behind. And then I turned around and I found these little guys in this tiny little basket. And I thought they were the cutest things ever. These are little pom-pom sort of figures, not quite stuffed animals. They were really popular in the 70s and I fell in love with this turtle. There's also a kangaroo and it was just stuffed with these little guys. So I took the whole little basket and put it in my bag. And then I headed downstairs into this finished basement. It was so big. The rooms just kept going and going. I approached this table that had some vintage toys and noticed Miss Susie, which is a book that I actually grew up reading. And then I looked and saw some, you know, older books like this encyclopedia and some Charlie Brown. There were also some horses there that if Janine was at the sale, she probably would have took a look at to see if they were Briar. 
but I didn't pick up anything else at this table. Instead, I turned around and went towards this little, I guess, area corner where I found some Halloween stuff. And as I looked, it mostly looked newer. I did pull out this little um, bowl just to make sure because I noticed that there was a book in it. And as I pulled out some of the stuff, I noticed that it was the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown book. So that's a classic. And of course, I had to add that to my bag. I looked through it a little bit more just to make sure there was nothing hidden, but most of this looked like Halloween from the 90s and mostly 2000s, which some of it can be collectible, but most of it usually isn't. It's a very specific thing, like those scarecrows and such, they're not really quite collectible. There was another room off the basement that had a lot of different figures, like these cherished teddies. They're not really collectible from what I know, but if you guys know differently, let me know. There's wrapping paper, all sorts of things, little knickknacks. I took a look, but didn't really come across anything that looked of value to me, but of course, we're always learning. If you guys see anything in this video that we should have picked up, let us know so that we can learn and continue to, you know, know what to look out for in the future. I always look at napkins and things like this because I'm looking for Christmas or Halloween. Halloween napkins from the 50s and 60s can resell and they're collectible and we actually have quite a few in our collection. So I'm always on the lookout for those. And there was a touch of like vintage in there. Those placemats looked a bit older. And then I came across this planter right here. That was Christmas. I had a feeling it was older. As I flipped it over, it was marked uh, Samson Imports and had a maker of Relpo. So this is a mid-century planter, but it's not super kitschy, not super cute, not really worth picking up. As I turned around, I noticed that there were some older cans and these are always so fun to look at. I love looking at the older, you know, paint cans and different packaging. And, you know, a lot of it is really collectible. I don't know which ones to particularly look out for, but I usually just look at anything that really catches my eye and then do a quick eBay search. Um, I really did like this tin. I thought the graphics were cool, but I knew I had a kitchen to get to that was overflowing with stuff. They even had a pink set for $250 and it's a Pyrex set. So I'm not sure if that's the going rate currently. I'm not into the Pyrex as of late. Let me know. Was that a good price for the whole pink set? It looked in pretty good condition. And I did find these little, you know, cupcake toppers, little boys and girls and some party ones, but nothing that I wanted to pick up and then I spotted some doilies and again I was hoping for some like you know napkins or more holiday-esque things in there but there wasn't too much. In a hutch in the living room I came across a November birthday angel. She didn't have a maker on her but she's most likely a napka or a left in and then I saw these reindeer. I actually had saw this in the estate sale listing and I was really curious about it. It looks to be an Atlantic mold so this is a hobbyist piece but it was missing like a Santa and sleigh. So I think if that other part of it had been there, um, it would have been maybe worth picking up. Now I came across this room that looks like a children's room. It had a ton of stuff from all different decades, like from the 2000s, you know, all these plush are a bit newer from the 2000s, all the way back to like the 50s and 60s. Like this trouble game is definitely a bit older. And so is this whole stack of games over here. Like there was just a ton of games. It was really cool to see and um, nothing that I picked up personally, but I did come across this little scrapbook, which was very like 70s. And the paintings underneath it too, I know they're like a specific look, like people do like these painted girls. I just don't know too much about them. These were prints, so I didn't do much research and I didn't really look into them, but I do know that they're something. That's what I do know. As I turned around, I came across the books, the children's books, so I did spend some time here looking through every single book, and I did have a good amount of success here. So you guys are going to want to stick around to the end. I don't show every single book here in the bookcase, but I will show you what I picked up. I didn't pick up Gumby, but I picked up some good books out of this. And then I also came across, the first time ever, a true poodle skirt at an estate sale. It was in fantastic condition. It was so cool to see. I made my way down the hallway, which was lined with turtle or rather frog plush and bears and came across the bedroom. There wasn't too much here, but I wanted to show you guys the furniture. It was such an amazing mid-century set of furniture. It included the dresser and the headboard and the two side nightstands. It was beautiful. And I should have asked how much it was because it was a really nice set, but I didn't because I knew I couldn't pick it up. I went back around to the main living room and took a last final look at some of the dolls that were there. I found this really cute cutie, and this whole table was just covered in different dolls that I don't know too much about, but it was really cool to see. And I even came across this little basket of ceramic knickknacks. 
If you watch the channel, you know Janine and I have a good amount of these already. But I was interested in picking up the whole bowl if I could get a good price on it. I didn't end up asking about it um, because I had to negotiate for what I already had, but I really did like this whole little bowl of different animals. I thought it was a really nice assortment. Okay guys, we are out of that estate sale. I spent way longer than I thought I was and the prices were a little higher than I was hoping. Um, I went through all that crafting stuff. She originally wanted $175, I think. And that wasn't including the three ceramics. I think she wanted like $25 or $20 a piece. They were all um, sets. They were all salt and peppers and they were missing their partner. The angel was probably worth it actually for a collector or even to resell, which is crazy. Um, maybe I should have picked her up, but I left her behind for somebody else. Um, but I did get some really fun tags and things that I've been looking for and like just haven't really come across at estate sales lately. And I think I got a pretty good price. I paid, I think 85 for everything. Um, so I'm going to show you guys what I got and um, let me know what you think and how I did. Um, yeah, I really wanted those little, I'll show you, I'll show you right now. Show it's the next day. We're doing the haul. Now, Janine, if you're watching, don't watch anymore. And guys, don't spoil it in the comments. Well, I'll have to tell her not to look at the comments um, because I picked up just a few things for her um, for Christmas. So I'm going to show you guys the books. The books were all in that cabinet for the most part, except for the Charlie Brown Halloween one. Um, that one was in the basement. I found this amazing golden Christmas book. It is missing the spine. The spine has fallen off, but this book, guys, is, I mean, amazing. Look at those little pixies on it. How incredible. And look at this. The first page is like a um, honeycomb. How cool is that? I've never seen anything like that. And this book not only is really cool in the illustrations, it's quite old. It's from 1947. And it's a Christmas book with things to do. Good luck walnuts. Goodies you can make. Like, how amazing is this? I'm going to have such a fun time looking through the illustrations. Pegasus and the Star. I mean, this is incredible. I didn't actually realize how cool this was um, until just now. Like, in the estate sale, I thought it was more of a um, just story. Like, Twas the Night Before Christmas. But it looks like there's, like, songs and, like, a candle riddle. So this is really fun to look at. Maybe I'll like look through it and pull out some really fun stuff um, to share with you guys in an upcoming video. Like if there's like a recipe or something that I found really interesting in here. Wow, look at that. So this is from 1947 and what a cool find. I mean, I was really excited to find this. I also found a Charlie Brown Christmas in hardcover. Now this is um, a first edition, I believe, when I was looking at it in the sale. First printing, 1965. Wow. And I grew up on um, Christmas peanuts. So this was a really fun find. But then I also found the Halloween version. Now this one does have some wear and tear on it. Um, and I don't know if Janine has this in her collection or not. I didn't intend on picking this up to give to her, but if she wants it, she can have it. 1967. Dedicated to the Grey Pumpkin, of course. This was really exciting. Now, I did pick up Spooky Tricks, which I know she does have in her collection. So this is not going to be a surprise. I'm going to show her, and if she wants to keep this one, if it's in better condition, she can. This is a great classic Halloween book. I believe from, like, the 70s. Let's take a look. Spooky Tricks. How to be a spook. It is from 1968. This is the first printing. Wow. Look at those graphics, guys. This is so cool. If you guys aren't familiar, Janine and I, um, well, really, Janine has a spooky book collection, um, which I contribute to and do enjoy as well. Um, and I think she has this one, but we'll let her take a look at this. Now, the next two I picked up specifically for her. I picked up this book called How Spider Saved Halloween. I thought it was really cute. I don't know if she has this. I don't think she does, but it is written on. I thought it was so cute, um, and I mean, how adorable is that? It is from 1974, the second printing. And now this one I'm really excited about. I picked this one up, instantly thought of her. 
I don't think she has this one. I think I had found a book illustrated by Norman Birdwall um, called How to Take Care of Your Pet Monster or something along those lines. I don't think we've ever found this monster jokes and riddles. So I did pick this up with her in mind. This will be under the Christmas tree for her. Um, it's in fantastic condition. It's from 1973, the fourth printing. And the graphics and illustrations in this are just like so funny, so good. So this was a great pickup, all these books that I found. A little unusual for me, but like I said in the video, some of these can fetch interesting and pretty good prices on eBay. These are like acrylic snowmen and they were pretty popular in the early 2000s, uh, mid 2000s, you know, Y2K. Um, and I think Department 56 made them, a bunch of different retailers made them. This one I did notice has a crack. Um, I listed all these three on eBay together. And I did note the crack on this one um, in hopes that somebody would pick it up to help pay for the $85 that I spent on the whole lot. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for these. They sell for some money, especially if you could find them boxed. Um, and those frosted snowmen too. If you could find certain ones, those sell as well. So that was a new learning um, experience for me. And they're pretty cute. They really do look like ice cubes. I do like them. Um, I remember these as a kid, like when I was younger, uh, having these around and seeing them in the stores. So I picked these up. I picked up this November Angel. She's in pretty good condition, little chip on the wing, and she actually already sold on eBay. I sold her for $20 shipped, which is about the going rate for this November one. I believe she's a Napco, but she does not have her original sticker on her. Um, you know, when I see these and they're a good price, I tend to pick them up. I have a little collection myself. I collect the February ones. I found this sweet little angel. She's on like a little stick, so she's probably like a pick of some sort. Definitely made in Japan. She has those paper wings. Really sweet. She was just laying around. I couldn't leave her behind. And here are the little friends that were stuffed in this little basket. This one really got to me. This is like a little kangaroo, all made out of pom-poms. And these are vintage. I'll show you in a second, but some of them are actually marked with the company. Um, I think people crafted these too as well, but I absolutely love the little Joey the mama kangaroo, her little floppy tail. This spoke to me. But yeah, something like this has a tag. Fun and fancy, 1973, this little raccoon with the apples, so cute. My favorite though has to be the turtle. I mean, come on guys, look at this. Look how cute this is. Adorable. I mean, you can't get much better than this. 1971, this cute little turtle. And these are in really good condition. I found these before, um, not the specific turtle, but I found these pom-pom adults before that are fun and fancy and you know covered in dust from the years but these are like in great condition there's this little christmas mouse really sweet how cute and then this little bunny and a little bird really really cute little assortment oh my goodness i'm just so glad that i was able to score these especially this little turtle I picked up two of these New World Stock Angels in the original packaging. They're really nice. They're made in Japan. And yeah, they've never been opened. Always fun to find New World Stock ornaments like this. I just wish we could sort of like brush her hair to the side and see her face, but this was really nice to pick up. And then this is the rest of what I have. I'm near the road, so I have to talk a little louder. Um, I picked up all the tags you saw, and this was sort of the point of contention and negotiating. I mean, I have like these like seals here that are really cute um you know some of these tags these are mostly from the 70s um just by the color and the way they look you could tell these are super 70s um and there are a lot of tags here for sure but i mean not a not not piles and piles and piles just a good pile a good healthy pile this is definitely the cutest one um so i got those i also got this cookie mold um i looked it up on ebay and this is made by a company called brown bag co and if you could find the holiday ones specifically halloween they really do resell nicely on ebay especially if you could find a couple i could only find one in the basement so i did pick it up i'm hoping to resell it on ebay and then you guys saw that whole bag filled with these little applique guys i fell in love with these and i really wanted to buy all of them but again she wanted 107 so i got everything here and then i just got a bigger pile of these guys i want to clarify here when i went to go pay for everything i had essentially everything you saw in the haul so far plus more applique like more of these little embroidered guys maybe two to three times the amount. like maybe double or double to three times the amount of what i have in front of me right here these appliques and she wanted 175 dollars for everything so i i don't know I don't know. I had to get these little snowmen though. And I had to get these Santas. 
I wasn't gonna leave without them. So I spent like an extra 10 to 15 just for these, um, but I absolutely adore them. And these are just little like embroidered applique that were, are probably from the 80s or 90s. Um, they're really cute, you know, sort of iron them onto your shirts and totes or whatever you want to do. These are sort of like tags that you can put on the inside as well. Um, I just fell in love with them. These are little uh, candy canes. I definitely chose the nicest out of what was there or the cutest. Um, but yeah, I was really surprised by the cost, $175. And that's without the ceramics that I wanted to buy. But, you know, I definitely got a deal with 85 for everything that I got. And I also got a pile of little um, greeting cards, but nothing too crazy. I'll show you. These are some of the greeting cards I got. Nothing like crazy, you know, ones that are from the 70s. Um, I think I even got some Snoopies in here. You know, a little like note cards. These might even be newer. Um, things like this. And that was everything I got. Um, maybe I should have spent $95 and gotten that one little angel ceramic. I don't know, but the sticker price sort of shocked me. Um, $175 and then I, I don't know how removing some, uh, applique, app, you know, those little embroidered applique brought it down to 85. So, but that's the moral of the story. Always negotiate, always, you know, bring up what you want and try to negotiate from there. You never know, you know, how you can get a better deal just by, uh, you know, going through a few rounds of negotiation. It was a really cool sale though. And I really liked how this sale like sort of set up everything. It wasn't quite a digger sale, which I, I do love a digger sale. I think I prefer a digger sale, but, um, you know, everything was sort of laid out nicely and organized. Um, but I'm hoping for some good estate sales next year. I feel like in the beginning of this year, there was a ton of them and well, not maybe a ton of them, but some really good ones. And that's what we're always after the hunt for vintage for great prices as it's becoming so hard and vintage is becoming so popular um you know you gotta keep looking always check those bags in the uh toy aisle at the thrift store and go to estate sales that you don't think will be anything um it's something that i'm trying to do this year or upcoming year because you never know right you never know what's hidden in those bins or you know boxes in the basement so i hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me on this solo estate sale trip let me know what you think of the haul what was your favorite thing that i saw or didn't pick up that you saw that you were like you should have picked that up laura let me know because i'm always learning from you guys that's why i picked up those little ice cube snowmen so thank you guys so much for joining us and see you next time bye